What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Adam Blompier's top 10 worst wrestling matches of 2022, man. There have been some great matches in WWE or just in wrestling in general. And then there has been some okay to mid matches. And then there's just been some god awful, what the hell was this? Who produced this match? Why was this even a thing? That happens every year. It's, it's always gonna happen, man. But guess what? We're gonna check that out since 2022 was almost done. And your boy is starting off 2023 on the right note as the undisputed wrestling YouTube champion of the world, man. Uh, shout out to Homie Dub for this beautiful beauty right here, man. I'm gonna be wearing this championship strap in the videos until my wall mount comes in and that way i'll put it on the back wall behind me so you can see it in all its glory because the undisputed youtube wrestling champ it's not going nowhere let's get right into this one appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's see what his list consists of man and if, if we agree well, this list was actually really hard to write. That's a good thing. I mean, sure, I only really watched two promotions, WWE and AEW, and both those have gone through a hell of a year behind the scenes. Big departures, big drama, tribalist rage and adoration in spade. Mm -hmm. But in terms of on-screen products, it's been a pretty damn good year. But we already yeah, covered not, the not good stuff bad. last week. And on this day, this very Christmas day, I'm afraid you've all been naughty. I mean, look at you. You're wrestling fans. So Blompy Claus <laughs> has brought you all stockings, stuffed to the brim with lumps of coal and no give backsies. I'm Adam Haley from Parts of Unknown, and here are 10 worst pay-per-view matches of 2022. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it already and want to see, you know, the nice version of this list, check out our 10 best ones. We did it last week. Watch it. Number 10, Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey, oh, SummerSlam. Brother. Bloody Ooh. hell, it's been a year for old Ronnie. I don't think it's necessarily indicative of the skill set of the baddest woman on the planet, but one thing's for certain, Ronda Rousey's not a ring general yet. No. And when she hasn't been wrestling Charlotte, who is? Her matches have all been super awkward with a lack of chemistry and cohesion severely dimming Ronda's star power. And honestly, that's a shame. Not so much for the multi-millionaire conspiracy theorists, more for the people who work with her. The yeah. person hurt the most by working with Ronnie this year is Liv Morgan, who got a wonderful underdog victory moment cashing in her briefcase on the night that she won it, you know, because you can't hold on to the women's briefcase for more Don't than 24 hours, a f***ing apparently. But then after that, the fans turned on her, largely down to yep. this match, which A, wasn't very good, and B, saw former pure babyface Liv Morgan essentially weasel her way out of a title defense and the audience f***ing let Liv know about it. Poor Liv. The Extreme Rules match wasn't very good either, but nope. at least she's uh, she's got she's got more character now. She's mad, you see. Number nine, Roman Reigns versus Goldberg Elimination Chamber. I mean, at this point, how can anyone be disappointed in a Bill Goldberg Saudi Arabia match? They take place in a dark timeline full of bizarre title <laughs> changes, hot young stars suddenly Definitely being a dark very bad at wrestling, and the Undertaker nearly dying. This match wasn't as bad as any of them, but it was still far from blockbuster. Mm -hmm. I am personally very cross they didn't do the two men running into each other for the double spear spot what we got was just a bit meh it's dull walk yeah. and brawl for half the match on the outside two spears and then a submission finish after six minutes i mean i suppose mm -hmm. i don't know if i wanted 10 minutes of roman reigns versus goldberg but maybe i didn't want i mean honestly i didn't care for this match we kind of knew this should have been just a squash match call it a day and go home that was it it you you couldn't expect a five-star classic from this not even a three-star classic. Not even a one-star classic. Not even a no-star classic. All you, all you should have expected from this, Roman Reigns, do his moves, get the fuck out of here. Six minutes was perfect length. Any Roman Reigns versus Goldberg. Maybe that's the point. Maybe just no more Saudi Goldberg. That would, that would be fine. Yeah. Number eight, the Usos versus Rick Boogs and Shinsuke Nakamura, WrestleMania 38. Oh, man, this is no one's fault, but this match fell apart and fell apart hard. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure how you pull a good match out of thin air when one of the four competitors gets injured and has to be shoot carried out. Yeah. We've already covered this moment in the most insane injuries of 2022 yeah, list. But at WrestleMania wild. night one, the very first match of WWE's two-part WrestleMania, no less, Rick Boogs attempted a power display spot, hoisting both Usos up on his shoulders. For a second, it looks as though the love child of Tom Selleck and the red M&M had accomplished the spot before his legs buckled underneath him and he fell to the mat, clutching his very much torn quad. The rest of the match Ooh. is a scramble to make something happen and hurriedly pin Shinsuke Nakamura wild. in less than seven minutes. 
What a shame. They Number seven, call Jade crazy Cargill audible, versus uh, Athena, audible. all out. It's really hard to work out how I feel about Jade Cargill. She's undeniably a star, and people in wrestling history have been bigger stars with a smaller skill set. But gee, golly jeepers, the Jade Cargill match is reliably one of the worst on almost every AEW card. That's, her matches against Tay Conti and Anna J were both crazy to say. disjointed, but her match at All Out is the real disappointment. Her versus the once former Ember Moon. I was expecting this to be a lot better than what it was. It, it did not live up to what I think a lot of fans wanted it to be or expected it to be. Could have been great. The wrestler now known as Athena certainly had the buzz of accomplishment with her when she arrived, but uh, it's bad. A bunch of blown or awkward spots performed in front of a crowd that were exhausted from the Elite versus Dark Order. Don't get me wrong, AEW want their own Goldberg, and Jade Cargill certainly has the presence of young Goldberg, but mm -hmm. hasn't quite nailed the whole exciting match bit of the equation yeah. number six powerhouse hobbs versus ricky starks all out this was the wrong call all out is going to go down in history as a curse show for <laughs> yep. a number of <laughs> for <reasons>. sure <laughs> it's to do with this muffin lover but there was also a few dodgy matches that went a head scratching direction the ladder match had a horribly flat finish Facts. we've already talked about athena cargill and then there's this a match with a pretty damn good build mm -hmm. over before it could really build up a head of steam with ricky starks losing to a spine buster which hasn't been a believable finish in a long time time five minutes yeah. these boys got two young stars with bright futures unlike darby allen mjf who got 20 minutes of and, and that's the crazy thing about that even though he's doing better uh ricky stark's uh trajectory right wise and hopefully they continue to keep catapulting him because he deserves to be moving up the card especially uh, if you're trying to make him your future star of the company. And the same thing with uh, Hobbs as well. Uh, you know, they need to continue to utilize him as well. They have talent. They just need to continue to use the talent. I actually kind of put them in, like, primary spots because if you want your company to succeed in the long run, you need to invest in the people that you have there. And we're not talking about people that have came from WWE. We're talking about homegrown talent. That's what you need to do. And hopefully he does that going forward in 2023 for uh, uh, other wrestlers within the company as well. Full gear last year. This Tony was Khan. over before you knew it with people's favorite Ricky Starks being knocked off with ease. This is not what people wanted. And like, no. I get that you don't want all 15 of the night's matches to go long. But maybe in that case, don't book 15 there matches. There we go. Tony. Simple. At least their lights out rematch slapped. Number five, Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee, WrestleMania 38. Uh, I mean, I don't really know about this one. I had a blast watching this match, but mostly because I was laughing at how ridiculously bad and weird it was to see Pat McAfee wrestle a match against what would happen if yeah. Dean Ambrose tripped and fell 80 years forward through time. Like, from an objective standpoint, this match is awful yeah Vince of course winning a match against someone who just won an important match of their career via yeah. a simpsons football to slightly above the groin and then the old ass man goes on to take <laughs> the worst stone cold stunner of all time oh like, it's garbage but after being beaten into submission by the same matches over and over and over again at least it's surprising funny garbage and it was one of those things where it's like yeah it was garbage but i think people give it a pass because the moment the moment was what it was all about it wasn't even about really having a match it was like damn we're about to see vince really have a match out here and he really beat pat, Ma pat mcafee <laughs> we're barely in the offense because he's vince fucking mcmahon it's, it, it's it's funny in that sense but when you really break it down no but we get it wrestlemania have stone cold out there to give uh vince one of the worst stunners of all time you know <laughs> by vince your mental sh old coffin dodger number four bobby lashley versus amos take your fucking pick three <laughs> fucking three pay-per-view mm. matches between bobby lashley and great carly to electric boogaloo and all of them are wanker cocktails i mean i suppose bobby lashley won most of them but on the other hand sad trombone sound effect i guess it resulted in bobby lashley <laughs> hot potatoing mvp onto amos mvp standing for most valuable potato freeing bobbles up to go on a reasonably hot baby face run but on the other hand Price is right, losing horn sound effect. Yeah. The WrestleMania 38 match is probably the worst one. Amos dominating Lashley to a severe lack of crowd response because Amos still doesn't quite carry himself with enough power, precision, swagger to sell his offense as being mm -hmm. actually devastating. I understand why these matches exist. Hoss matches more than have their place. Gunther and Sheamus say hello and Djahwich respectively, mm -hmm. but only when the stuff looks like it actually hurts. And yeah. it doesn't. And he makes a great point when you have some physical being or someone that's supposed to be portrayed as physically dominating 
you know, it, it makes it better when they're actually, they're fitting that part. Like, even though Omos looks physically intimidating, when you watch his matches, you you don't get that, ooh, you don't get that, oh, like, damn, that looked painful. You just get that, I don't know. I don't know if, if it's how he's delivering the moves, but I don't get any sense of excitement when I see him. I just see, like he said, the great Kali 2.0. That's it. And, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what they're going to do with him. MVP, even though he's in line with him, that doesn't really help or cover up the fact that his matches just don't seem to really hit like they should. And no amount of jobbers that you get from every city can fix that. Doesn't look like it hurts when Amos hits people. Number three, Shotzi versus Ronda Rousey Survivor Ooh. Series. Ooh. Hello, Ronda. Lovely to see you again. If you're looking for a clear example about how Ronda Rousey probably isn't yet ready to lead a match, look no, no. further than this. I'm not saying this to be a shit person. Ronda has had some very good matches. She has she had is some a good star, matches. But leading a match, that particular skill is super hard, especially no. when the crowd have turned on you to the extent that the crowd have turned on the baddest woman on the planet, with people no longer reacting to every Every single thing that Rousey does, her matches have become weird and a bit awkward. And this is the weirdest mm -hmm. one and the most awkward. Most of yeah. the spots in Shotzi Rousey crash and burn. That ring apron DDT thing makes you want to look away whispering, oh no, into your hands. Yeah. Shotzi's <laughs> taken a real kicking from the IWC after Money in the Bank also saw a couple of her spots not pan out. So yeah. don't really want to lay in any more kicks. but. Yeah, this was a rough watch. Number two, Big both facts. rumbles, Royal Rumble. But hey, at least Shotzi versus... Yep, I, I called it. This is why when I did my tier list of pay-per-views uh, this year, Royal Rumble was, a, in my opinion, the worst pay-per-view WWE has put on because both the Rumbles suck. You're there for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, the matches in between are cool, but you're there for what the title says. Royal Rumble. If you have two good Royal Rumble matches... The rest of the card could be meh, and people will give it a thumbs up because at least the Royal Rumble matches were great, entertaining, you had a good time. If you have two bad Royal Rumble matches, or matches that just, the, the outcome didn't make sense, the, the it was just lackluster, people are going to be like, it could be, you could have number five star classics on each and every match outside of the Rumbles, no one's going to care. You want to know why? Because they're only going to remember the Rumble matches being boring or or the decision or who made, you know, who won, the, the surprises just wasn't hidden. That's what people are going to remember. This is Ronda was short. This year, both Rumbles were f***ing long and f***ing boring. And right. Up until a recent redraft, the Rumbles were joint number one on this list because the Royal Rumbles are my favorite match. And how dare you make them boring, WWE? How f***ing dare you the women's rumble is fairly bad especially considering that ronda's surprise return was largely blown thanks to so-called wrestling journalists mm -hmm. like so-called sean ross sap you bastard but <laughs> the men's rumble is absolutely dire the surprises were bad bunny who's been in wwe recently johnny knoxville which was admittedly fine and shane mcmahon whose return to the company was so shit that he was sent home the men's match is just so flat. You spend the entire hour plus waiting for something yep. to happen. And then nothing does unless you count Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin eliminating AJ Styles, leaving you with this horrible sinking anxiety that the last thing we truly loved in Vince's WWE, the Royal Rumble match, maybe that had lost its magic too. There's one consolation. Surely Once Brock came out there, I was like, oh, well, all right. We know how this ends. This means the first Rumbles under Triple H's rule will have to be even better. Oh, They'll of have course. even more to prove. Right? Right? I think Triple H got and it. Number one, The New Day versus The Brawling Brutes, WrestleMania 38. Fuck this match. <laughs> the Rumbles were dull. This is truly insulting. Now, to be clear, no one should be angry at Ridge Holland for the botched belly-to-belly -belly suplex yeah. that broke Big E's neck on SmackDown back in March. Accidents yeah. are an unfortunate byproduct of wrestling. Mm -hmm. However, how f***ing ever, with that heartbreaking injury fresh in everyone's minds, with it being mm -hmm. a very real possibility that Big E might never wrestle again, to play a recap of that injury before the match on the WrestleMania stream for the New Day to come down to the ring at WrestleMania mm -hmm. with Big E style singlets and then to have New Day lose in less than two minutes, genuinely fuck you. That made no sense.
That really made no sense. That that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that reeks of Vince McMahon booking. I get it. They didn't have enough time, but you gotta. That means you gotta. You gotta do something. You gotta make some time because this was a very important thing. And you know, still wishing Biggie a, a speedy recovery. I don't know uh, uh, any update on him. Uh, so if you guys do know, comment down below. Let me know. I know there has been some rumors that he may not be able to come back to wrestling. I'm not sure. I hope that's not the case. But such a serious situation was pretty much pushed to the side because they didn't have enough time. When one of your biggest acts in the company pretty much was taken out unintentionally, of course. But, you know, just accidents happen to now his teammates lose in like two minutes, bro. That's like, the fuck are we doing, bro? Zero reaction when the Brutes won except bleak anger and empty sadness. What yeah. was the f***ing point? point? Change yeah, your f***. Plans give New Day a ceremonial win that Biggie yeah, can watch from home. You <laughs> relentless assholes! Talk about leaving the sourest possible taste in your mouth. This almost single-handedly spoiled what was otherwise a fun and silly WrestleMania. Fuck this match, and that's all. Yeah, it. man, definitely in agreement with him on that. Even though I still enjoyed WrestleMania this year, WrestleMania as a whole, even though there were some you know issues and stuff, as a whole, I still enjoyed it. It was one of the most fun WrestleManias I've seen in quite some time and uh, i'm still stick by that and hopefully next year's wrestlemania could be even better but i think it will be i think we're in good hands we're gonna see what triple triple h does with with the royal rumble once we know what he does with the royal rumble then we can kind of have an idea of how wrestlemania season is going to play out man but yeah this was a good one uh comment down below let me know what was uh the worst match you've seen in wrestling all this year, doesn't matter what company, let me know down below, man. But your boy is still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. And I'm going to continue to be that way. I'm going to be a fighting champion. I'm going to make sure that boys understand that as long as I have this baby, I'm at the top. You feel me? And once again... I'm going to uh, get a mount so I can put this on the back wall. So that way, you know, it'll be always visible. But I, I am thinking about anytime we do some live streams or pay-per-views or whatever reactions, I think I think she needs to be on my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, 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 I think this year I'm going to start adding uh, some more wrestling belt collections uh, to the mix. So, uh, yeah, um, comment down below. Let me know what other wrestling uh, replica championship belts I should be getting in the future because I think... I'm going to put it on that, all on that back wall. I think that would be a pretty cool aesthetic to have. So uh, this is the first of many. But this first one means a lot because it's made just for me. And I, I, I'm I, really, I really appreciate this. Shout out to E-Dub once again. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one.